You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show and we're joined in the studio with Dave Howe from the Chevy Horticulture Society this evening right here at uh, BRFM. Uh, Dave, are there any plants that um, we can be planting for uh, this time of year? Yeah, surprisingly, there's quite a few. There are quite many plants that can be planted at this time of the year. Well, on the vegetable side, let's deal with that side first because I've just recently been doing it on my, my own plot. On my own plot. Uh, on the vegetable side, uh, and along with many fellow volunteers, uh, we've been busy over the last few weeks um, planting winter onions, some shallots, garlic, for instance, which needs a period of cold uh, for it to be successful for the following year, actually. Um, broad beans is, is another one of those vegetables that you can actually be putting in now. The reason for that basically is that uh, by the time you get black fly around, your broad beans are really well on the way to being mature plants before the black fly can get hold of them. Although, funnily enough, this year I had very little trouble from black fly. Right. That's how perverse it can be on occasions. Um, winter lettuces and some brassicas as well. So, yeah, there are quite a few vegetables. But uh, for some winter and early spring colour in the garden, there's many flowering plants and bulbs uh, that can still be sown now. So, Narcissus or, or daffodils being one of those tulips as well. Tulips you can plant during, um, certainly during uh, December. Winter pansies, cyclamen, and uh, a very pretty early spring flower which I am growing in clumps for the first time. I've had them in pots before, but uh, it's uh, muscari or grape hyacinth as it's more popularly known. And uh, it, as I say, it's a very, very pretty, attractive blue or white flower. There's a blue and white variety available. And uh, again, we mustn't forget the colourfully, colourfully varied crocuses that will be around for uh, just after um, the just after the new year has turned. In effect, the first flowers you'll start to see, along with snowdrops, of course. Um, so, and then of course there's the uh, the varied crocus. As I've mentioned the crocus. That'll be up early next spring in swathes, and um, that's the kind of thing that you'll see naturalised in yep. grassy areas, you know, um, and lawns. And I noted that today's been much colder than of late, but uh, if the ground's not too hard, it's not too late to, to plant for next year's or next spring's early showing of those particular varieties. It's still possible to do it and get them in. It's been a very strange year, though, as we've all agreed. I think everybody's yep. actually agreed, uh, climate-wise. And I'm sure we're all aware it's uh, quite remarkable how many plants that there are still blooming. Uh, just before we were talking, to, uh, when you were playing a record just now, I, I happened to mention many of my fuchsias are still actually blooming and it's going to be a difficult time to, to think, when am I finally going to take them in or put them to bed? Or do I still want to see them actually blooming on? And do I run the risk of actually killing them by leaving them out, if you know well, what I mean? Well, it stayed so warm up in kind of road, it'll suddenly be a heavy frost and all these plants are going to be caught out. <laughs> Particularly tonight, I'm well, starting yeah. to think, you know, do I take the torch out and put them away tonight very quickly? Uh, so, yeah, there are still things which are blooming. Um, those things should by now have shut down for the winter. Uh, as I said, they're fine. There's also the time to plant bare-rooted bushes, shrubs and fruit trees. A lot of um, garden centres and a lot of uh, plantsmen will be actually offering for sale bare-rooted plants. If you're buying bare-rooted plants and, and you're not able to place them in their final position, um, the advice always is heal them in as quickly as you possibly can. Dig a hole and just get the roots into the ground to keep those roots moist and then they won't be in danger of actually drying out. So, as you can see, there's still quite a lot that can actually be done, uh, even during the month of December. Dave, uh, what plants are um, good as indoor plants um, to give some colour over Christmas? I can think of four specifically that will give you a good display over the festive season, and that's apart from the holly, mistletoe and ivy, of which there are many songs, the green ones. Um, the first is, uh, of course, indoor cyclamen. There have been a lot of those around. People are selling those just about everywhere, every uh, garden centre or, or every shop you go to, uh, every superstore has got um, cyclamen and that kind of thing which is um, being sold. They're, they're ve they'll look very attractive on windowsills and on the table for Christmas Day. There's no reason why you can't put any of these plants on the table. But the next one is uh, the giant flowering hippie astrum. You know, you know that thing that uh, 
which is massive, it is about four feet tall, right. has a massive flower. Now that will certainly fill a space and I would suggest that you don't put that on your Christmas table, but keep it to the side. Uh, it's a massive flower and it's got long strap-like leaves. It, it's always a good talking point. Uh, not least because you can, you can amaze and amaze your friends by saying, I grew that, would you believe, and it's about four foot tall. There's, of course, the plant that's most associated with Christmas, and that's the poinsettia. You know, the, the green with the, the red oh, bracts yeah, yeah. on it, yeah. Um, there are another, uh, a few other colourways uh, available. There's a cream and there's a pink one. But uh, the crimson variety is still the most popular. You've got to be warned, though, about poinsettia, and it's happened to me before I knew about them. It's a hot climate plant. It's originally from Mexico and will need to be well protected from any cold winds and drafts for even the shortest of journeys home. I think I may have said this before, actually, that people will buy them from a shop where it's been nice and warm and light and airy, and then they take it out into the car park and they leave it in a cold car for a couple of hours while they go shopping elsewhere. That's just the kind of non-protection that it doesn't need, in effect, and very often you'll see the leaves fall off very, very quickly. So it needs to be protected. You should, as I say, you should protect it from the cold when you're walking from the shop or from the store to your own car. Uh, the coloured bracts, they're not officially flowers, they're actually the coloured bracts. So they shed so easily and they're very unlikely to regrow. Certainly if you were lucky, not for Christmas time anyway. Um, there's another plant that's well worth cultivating on the windowsill and I'm sure you've seen them when you've been shopping and many people will have seen them uh, when they go shopping. They're no longer as expensive as they used to be and, and they're much easier to grow and keep growing with a small amount of attention to, uh, to their needs and that's the orchid. Right. Uh, specifically the variety Phalaenopsis which is a very easy variety to grow. That's the one you will most commonly see in lots of places, garden centres, plantsmen will, um, will sell them, at, you know, high street shops will sell them as well. So Phalaenopsis is very, very popular. Uh, there are so many colours to choose from. Um, keep the plant fed uh, with orchid special feed, that's not too expensive. Uh, out of strong sunlight or too much heat, it doesn't like a lot of sunlight. Um, sparingly watered and the plant should reward you with not just Christmas time but with months of flowers and uh, on tall stems very very attractive flowers indeed and a multiple number of flowers on them and after a while uh, repeat flowering they'll come back for the next uh, couple of months after that so in effect you'll get two or three months worth of flowering blooming it'll look as though it's actually dying but it will come back a few months after that so economically very well worth having so yeah there's quite a lot of color which is out there yeah. uh, for the christmas period but i would recommend certainly going for the uh, the phalaenopsis type orchid very much easier than people think they actually are we are talking to dave hale in the studio from the chevy horticultural society this evening right here at brfm 